Today we are going to discuss about the water pollution. Uh, this is uh, the second category of uh, pollution after the air pollution. So as you know that water is an uh, essential commodity for survival and uh, we need water for drinking, cooking, bathing, washing and uh, one of the most important use of water on the earth is the irrigation. You know, the 80% of the fresh water is used for the irrigation in India and uh, on the global basis, on global uh, level, 70% of uh, the water, fresh water, is used for the irrigation purpose. This fresh water comes both from surface water resources like uh, rivers, lakes, streams and also uh, from the groundwater. So besides this, uh, the water is also an important operational uh, of operational uh, uh, commodity for various industries, uh, particularly for food manufacturing committee uh, uh, um, companies and also energy producing companies like thermal power plants, power, uh, nuclear power plants, and uh, most of the water comes from the lakes and. Uh, rivers, groundwater, you know, um, in most of the countries where the surface water uh, resources are not available. So the demand of the fresh water is met from the groundwater. So in water, we have uh, many kinds of uh, things uh, which are dissolved in dissolved conditions like minerals, uh, like air is uh, in water particularly the carbon dioxide and oxygen which gets diffused or dissolved from the atmosphere into the water. As you know, the fresh water which is uh, without the, any kind of pollutant, organic pollutant basically, has uh, the oxygen concentration about 6 to 10 parts per million and also the carbon dioxide concentration is around 0.05%. So this is the brief uh, what is uh, the uses of water and why are we using, uh, why are we studying this lecture with respect to the water pollution. So besides all these uses, what we use water for, it leads to the pollution also. So when we use water for irrigation, so there should be a certain kind of uh, within the limit, threshold limit, certain parameters like dissolved salts, uh, pathogens and uh, other <coughs> industrial pollutants should be in limit so that it cannot alter with the soil properties. Similarly, in drinking water, we should also be having certain uh, pollutants within the limit like pathogens, like dissolved salts and uh, biological oxygen demand should be less than 6 so that it is fit for the drinking purpose. But due to some uh, due to some anthropogenic and natural activities, the water resources, particularly the ground and uh, the particularly the surface water resources have been polluted uh, since the population explosion and industrialization. So what is the water pollution? Water pollution is defined as a degradation of the quality of water. Basically, the quality of water is categorized in three parameters. First, physical properties, chemical properties, and biological properties. So all these properties, if they get polluted, if they get diverted from the normal range, then the water gets polluted. We, we can say the water is polluted. So it is defined as uh, degradation of the water quality due to the addition of substances like it might be organic substance means organic nature it can be inorganic can be biological it can be radioactive or certain factors like physical factors it may be like a heat uh, which increases the temperature of the water which is unfit for the use or which is unfit for the survival of certain aquatic organisms like fishes and uh, it can be both, uh, water pollution can be both, uh, uh, when we talk about the source, it can be both natural as well as man-made uh, pollution. 
So if we talk about the natural, what are the natural causes of the water pollution? They are the soil particles. When the any soil erosion happens in any part of the world or any part of the land, uh, because of certain reasons, soil erosion has also itself many reasons why soil erosion happening. So if it is happening, so it adds soil particles to the water, it makes water turbid unfit for the use, particularly for the drinking purpose. And it is uh, basically un unfit for the animals also. And it can happen uh, also through the leaching of certain, from certain uh, soils or uh, uh, dissolving of certain minerals from the rocks. If you see the uh, ocean water is uh, itself not pollu polluted, but uh, due to the evolution, due to the aging of the earth, certain rocks gets dissolved into the water, the minerals and salt gets dissolved in the water and gradually the concentration of the salts in the oceans gets increasing. So uh, it leads to the increase in the con concentration of salts that is increasing the TDS as you might be remembering the salt concentration of the oceans is more than 5% that is very high so <clears throat> percent means 5% means out of 105 parts uh, if we talk about the uh, trees, uh, it is around uh, 5 parts per thousand and if we talk about the fresh water it is uh, 500 ppm means 500 parts per million so that is fit for use for drinking purpose so these are natural causes they are happening uh, even uh, the human were not evolved on the earth but after the humans start their activities maybe the agriculture in primitive man start the agriculture activity but uh, gradually like the industrial uh, era came they start using the fossil fuels besides they also leads to the discharge of wastewater that we call the industrial effluents uh, that get makes the water pollute, polluted so in the course of uh, the, this uh, series I, I guess uh, it will take three four lectures to complete the water pollution so um, we will uh, dis also discuss how we can uh, handle the industrial effluents what are the various uh, means and what are the mechanisms to reduce the pollution concentration in the industrial wastewater. So next category is the sewage water uh, that is that comes from our homes that is uh, from homes two kinds of water comes one is the black water black water comes from the latrines from the toilets and the gray water which comes from the kitchen it is basically a uh, uh, comprising of the organic waste like we are doing the dishwashing, cleaning the uh, vegetables, fruits and uh, that all encompasses the grey water. So both the grey water and the black water have different kind of treatment and different kinds of use that most of the countries are using that kind of uh, segregation at the source level particularly uh, in the country of Israel and Singapore. So besides that, animal sheds, slaughterhouses, detergents, pesticides—they all uh, are the—they are all the uh, anthropogenic or man-made sources of the water pollution. So on the basis of how a pollution, how a pollutant enters into the waste, uh, into the receiving water bodies. Receiving here water bodies are the water body in which our uh, wastewater goes like the, it can be a stream it can be a spring it can be a lake uh, any uh, any natural water body can be a receiving water bodies so if we if you recall uh, air pollution also have the two types of the pollution like point source and non point source here also uh, with respect to the water pollution we also have two kinds of the pollutants uh, first is the point source which have a definite outlet which goes directly into the receiving water bodies like from an, any industry uh, the water comes out uh, through an uh, big pipes like uh, or from the sewage water 
from our homes uh, in urban local body or in municipal corporations they are collecting the waters and they discharge it uh, directly into the water body that can be called the point source in very first slide this one uh, this is called a point source where the water is coming directly from a certain outlet which can be managed which can be controlled so second one is a non-point source which is a kind of a diffused source of uh, water it comes from the runoff uh, it can be from the leaching or it can be any other things that can go from diffuse that cannot be identified directly so from this picture you also can visualize what are the point and non-point source see here is an urban uh, locality and here is a rural locality both have uh, <coughs> water needs and both uh, both generate the waste water sewage water so here the directly the waste water goes into the stream so here also in uh, uh, rural uh, sewage treatment plants in uh, urban areas where basically the wastewater is collected from these uh, urban areas and it's treated. Treatment means to reduce the load of pollutants in it. And when the pollutant load is reduced to a certain level to prescribe a limit that pollution control, central pollution control board has notified or should be the level of parameters of the <coughs> wastewater that are, is, is uh, treated uh, by the i mean the which the water which is treated from the wastewater treatment plant uh, before leading uh, before discharging to certain water bodies or should be the parameters and uh, these are the point sources basically if we talk about the non-point sources this is the cropland for example we apply fertilizer and pesticides in here in cropland and uh, there is a rainfall so from the rainfall <coughs> sorry from the rainfall the water uh, the pesticides and fertilizers gets dissolved in the rainwater and it uh, is it flows to the water body that is called a <coughs> non point source also in uh, the urban uh, rural areas where from the upper um, areas the water comes uh, uh, like in form of flash floods like when the rainfall happens so you know better uh, you can differentiate now what is point and non-point source of water pollution so based on uh, the categories of water pollutants yeah, i have discussed this all earlier also uh, there are various types of pollutants and sources first is a sewage sewage is generally which is comes from our homes wastewater and other is domestic wastes domestic waste is certain food particles leftover food we discharge in the water bodies particularly when we go to any the picnic spot or excursion uh, spot leftover foods are they either are <coughs> thrown to the water bodies Certain organic wastes like the slaughterhouses, they generate the blood wastes or offal. Offal means some particles of the organic which are uh, generated when we uh, chop the meat. So pesticides, you know, uh, certain pesticides are used uh, in the agriculture fields, fertilizers, oils. This is also an important water pollution, particularly when uh, during the transportation of the oil from one area to another area uh, through the ships. Heavy metals, <coughs> this is also an important source. Heavy metals, basically, it can happen to the, uh, in the soil or basically it happens in the groundwater uh, when there is the oxidation. For example, when we uh, dug a well any, at any location, one heavy metal is chromium. When it is uh, there, when it gets oxidized, it changes its oxidation state. It gets released into the water bodies and it, uh, pollutes the water. This problem is uh, mainly uh, in the West Bengal, in certain districts of West Bengal. And uh, the modern day kind of pollution is the radioactive waste and uh, detergents. Detergents have a very important uh, component that is the phosphorus which is uh, the precursor of the plant growth. So, so these were the 
water pollutants, categories of water pollutants. Now, what are the major uh, categories of uh, the water pollutants? Like when we talk about the infectious agents, that are, is the biological category of uh, the pollutants. They are the examples are the bacteria, viruses, protozoa, parasitic worms. The sources of this is basically the human and animal waste. If any uh, area of or any water body have a dead animal uh, in upstream, it might be having high load of bacteria and viruses. Or uh, if any water body is in contact with the human waste, this basically the uh, feces or the other products from the humans. It also uh, can uh, uh, initiate the pollution like the bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and parasitic worms. So it, this happens most prominently in uh, in Kashmir also, in uh, particularly in the Bargam district in the uh, summers when there is a dearth of uh, water. So the cholera kind of disease is very prominent in Bargam district in a certain period of time in a year because the water streams that are coming from uh, the hills they uh, are having the this kind of uh, the pathogens present in the water that leads to, to the uh, cholera and it also can cause typhoid if certain water body is having uh, the bacteria they can cause typhoid and other diseases also <coughs> waterborne diseases uh, besides that uh, it can be having the oxygen demanding waste basically uh, this uh, is connected with to, uh, with the eutrophication that will be discussed separately if any water body uh, any water body basically has a certain kind of uh, the parameters like it has dissolved oxygen it has organic material it has bacteria and certain other uh, organisms also if because of certain reasons the organic uh, load or organic content in the water gets increased <clears throat> maybe because of the eutrophication or maybe because of the animal manure or plant debris what kind of uh, any kind of thing can uh, be the source of the organic uh, pollutants like uh, if we dump our food waste into the water if uh, we uh, if uh, there is an increase in the nutrient level of the water it initiates the plant growth and then when the plants grow they die and uh, produce and they, the organic matter uh, gets submerged in the lower levels of water and then when bacteria start degrading that organic material they uh, take the dissolved oxygen into the water from the water and it reduces the water uh, oxygen content of the water and it makes the aquatic animals like fishes very difficult to, to survive in that so that oxygen that is called oxygen demanding means oxygen is needed for the decomposition of the organic wastes that is needed by the bacteria that oxygen is needed by the bacteria for degradation of the organic wastes so the, what are the sources of this organic waste it is the sewage that is uh, that comes from our uh, kitchens that directly goes into the water stream animal uh, feedlot paper mills processing any uh, industrial or domestic sources can be a uh, source of the organic wastes and it is uh, uh, as I said it is a harmful effect of a large population of bacteria they decompose the waste and they degrade the quality of water basically they increase the biological oxygen demand which is also called the BOD of the water and uh, it makes other organisms difficult to survive like the fishes they die it happen most commonly happens in the summers <coughs> where uh, in summers also the uh, oxygen concentration is less because the diffusion is less uh, in cold water the amount of oxygen is more because uh, if you have uh, seen the relation between the temperature pressure and dissolved oxygen conditions you can uh, i mean in the 12th class they, uh, it has been perfectly uh, mentioned in one of the lecture in the chemistry so that is uh, related here how the increase in temperature reduces the dissolved oxygen concentration so in summers if uh, the organic load is high then 
the fishes uh, can die certain kind of fishes that are uh, more uh, uh, that are more susceptible for the decrease in the oxygen level in, in the water so another uh, category is inorganic pollutants it can be uh, the water soluble like acids or compounds of metals such as lead uh, or it can be arsenic selenium salt such as sodium chloride uh, fluoride compounds uh, from the soil so the sources of uh, these uh, inorganic pollutants here uh, the water soluble may be like the nitrogen like phosphorus these two are also the inorganic sources of uh, the nutrients so the major sources uh, might be from the surface runoff or industrial effluents because industries they use many kinds of chemicals for the processing like there are uh, electroplating industry chrome industry dyeing industry many types of industry they use uh, n number of chemicals for processing so that chemicals also find their way in the, in the industrial effluents and ultimately they find uh, the uh, they find their way to the receiving water bodies and that can lead to the increase in the in uh, inorganic chemical uh, uh, compounds in the water so uh, what are the harmful effects make a fresh water unsuitable for the use if uh, the dissolved salts concentration increases more than 500 then uh, you cannot drink that water that is that is salty and it can cause skin cancers crippling of spinal and neck damage these are all symptoms are related to the uh, this uh, heavy metals also because in this inorganic chemicals heavy metals are also like lead uh, chromium, uh, arsenic, and uh, the another one is, uh, these three are main compounds that can cause these kind of diseases. Fluoride damage is there, it causes neonog disease, crippling of the limbs, it uh, makes our bones weak, can cause damage to the central nervous system, kidneys, and uh, also liver, and uh, other, uh, and, I mean, uh, aquatic life is also uh, degraded. Oh, one of the best examples for this is uh, the Minamata disease, which happens in Japan in early in earlier 90s, where one of uh, the industries which were using uh, mercury, and uh, that mercury gets uh, finds its way in a bay called Minamata. And uh, that mercury gets converted into mercury chloride and when the fishes uh, start feeding on the plants in the water and that mercury chloride coat, uh, gets uh, their way, uh, finds its way into the biomass of the fishes and when people start consuming those fishes that through the process of biomagnification and food chain that cause uh, that uh, gets accumulated into the bodies of humans and that can that causes certain diseases that cause Minamata disease. You can Google at what is the Minamata disease. And uh, organic pollutants like oil, gasoline, plastics, and uh, pesticides, cleaning, solvent, detergent, solvents. So, besides all you know, the plastic is one of the most um, uh, important and significant pollutant which is emerging nowadays particularly this problem is this was a uh, earlier problem for freshwater bodies also but this is now uh, uh, getting it finds its way into the oceans particularly the microplastic uh, if we uh, dump anything into the water body it finds its way into the oceans and then <coughs> ocean uh, the ecosystem gets disturbed uh, most of the birds they um, think that any plastic thing is a fish they start eating it and it, it is not digested and ultimately they die uh, because of the hunger so the plastic is also one of the emerging uh, pollutants in oceans particularly so these are all organic sources so the uh, origin is sources industrial effluents household cleaners that is the detergents surface runoff or farms or yards and it can threat uh, the human life mm, like pesticides in the central nervous system uh, could be attacked reproductive disorders cancer gas gasoline and oil or some solvent they all have different kinds of the symptoms on uh, humans plants and wildlife 
so other uh, category is the plant nutrients so like the nitrate and phosphate and ammonia these three are the very important nutrients that uh, create the problem like eutrophication so ma major sources the sewage manure agriculture runoff and uh, like if the ammonia, ammonia concentration is more in the water like more than 400 uh, no not 400 but more than um, 45 parts per million it can cause the below baby syndrome so below baby syndrome is like uh, when any baby is uh, born uh, its blood has more uh, ammonia concentration <clears throat> the hemoglobin uh, concentration uh, gets less uh, basically the oxygen concentration is less this ammonia gets uh, <clears throat> gets reacted with the uh, hemoglobin and it reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of uh, the newborn babies and most of the babies gets uh, die because of this so uh, besides having impact on the humans it also have impact on certain other aquatic organisms it uh, initiates the weed growth or aquatic plant growth uh, that is the most higher uh, disastrous I, I think the most uh, uh, widespread problem in our water bodies particularly in Dal Lake in Buller Lake uh, if you see that the lake they are uh, collecting the weeds every every day they are collecting the weeds but it start still gets uh, expanding because we are not stopping our sewage discharge to the uh, over lakes if we stop this then over the period of time the nutrient load will get decreased and the water bodies will be uh, same uh, in their earlier stage how they were before we discharged the sewage into the water bodies then uh, sediments and silts this is also uh, but it takes a lot of time uh, any water bodies might it might be the river it might be the lakes they <coughs> their basin gets uh, uh, shallow over the period of time because of the because of the settling of the soil and silt their water uh, holding capacity decreases this also can lead uh, to the floods uh, that's why the dredging of the rivers and lakes is important because if we not uh, if we will not go for the dredging the lake will ultimately die it will be converted into the land so the major source is the land erosion soil erosion so it can uh, reduce the photosynthesis besides all the or longer period of time uh, what can be the impacts the short period of time um, i mean the sh short period of time impacts could be it can reduce the photosynthesis uh, aquatic food chain can be hampered pesticides uh, can uh, like the cells and soil can uh, have can be having many kinds of uh, the uh, pesticides bacteria if it's coming from the farm lands so that also can uh, lead to destroying of uh, the uh, water bodies or uh, reducing the quality of water bodies besides that it reduces the water holding capacity or it cause it can cause filling of the leaks and uh, that uh, over the period of time the water bodies will get vanished you can see uh, particularly in uh, winters or water bodies like uh, river Jahlil, uh, it's basin its uh, water level is very less you can see the floor only three feet is the water so at some location the water level is only three feet so if we did go for the proper dredging over the period of time every day or uh, Particularly, dredging activity has been initiated after the 2014 uh, floods, but it should be a practice of uh, continuous practice <clears throat> so that floods can be reduced. And uh, another important is the radioactive minerals like iodine, radon, uranium, cesium, thorium, and uh, the major sources of uh, these are the nuclear and coal burning power plants, mining, processing. So these are not uh, widespread kind of pollutants. Basically, these are the uh, pollutants only in the location where the radioactive minerals are used, particularly in the power plants. So you know the what is <coughs> the harmful impacts of the it can cause mutations. Radioactive minerals they uh, release certain radiation that can cause genetic mutations, 
miscarriages, birth defects, and certain other diseases like cancer. And uh, last one is the physical kind of pollution that is called thermal pollution of the water. If uh, the water <coughs> is having temperature more than its ambient temperature, then uh, the certain aquatic life is disturbed. So when the water comes up from certain power plants for cooling, water is cooled from the electric power plants, it increases the temperature of uh, the receiving water bodies. So it uh, reduces the dissolved oxygen levels and uh, it makes the aquatic organisms more vulnerable to the diseases, parasites and toxic chemicals. So,